probably one of my greatest moments in my career was <clears throat> Jason Momoa called me, you know, so I'm working on Stargate Universe and said, Val, can I take some of my stuff? Because I'm going on Game of Thrones and I want to show them what I like and how to do it. And I, of course, couldn't give them anything. I did ask and they were like, no. <laughs> um, but I just felt like we had done a good job when the actor says, I want to show them what we've done. Wow. And he wanted to use Ronan as his template for Khal Drogo, you yeah. know, and he did a haka for that. I mean, I, I have to wonder how much of Drogo had Ronan Dex inside of him. You know, well, there because, was some there. Um, I mean, Jason was very collaborative. He was very involved in, in the costumes. He loves costumes so much. So I imagine he had some input and he took some from his from his history. What was it like designing for Ronan Dex? I mean, these these coats that he had, these leather. I mean, this guy was was well, to put it on, specifically on the run, you know? Yeah. And he it was yeah. completely utilitarian costume. He was, I, I had so much fun with Jason designing for him because he's, I mean, he's a big man. He's six foot five. He's not a tall, skinny guy. He can handle anything. As a matter of fact, it takes a little adjusting to get used to the fact that everything has to be a little larger than life for him, right? Because things will, will be lost on him. And when I first um, was asked to go on to Stargate Atlantis, I went into that meeting, you know, and it was like, obviously Brad and Robert, but it was also Joe and Paul and Carl Binder. And they were like in this sort of creative, uh, creative meeting, like, you know, we want you to come on, but what are you going to bring? Right. Kind of thing. And so I came with two ideas. The first thing was I thought that all of our lead cast should have an off world outfit. Because we had, because as you said about SG-1, when they were always in the military uniform, you know, we wanted to create some levels of interest. And this is and, seasons four and five, again, to, be, to clarify. Yeah, seasons four and five on Stargate Atlantis. And so I had come in with some ideas for each of them, including Rodney McKay, you know, like he needed to be sexy and he needed to, you know, have some attitude. And, and of course, you know, um, Shepard, uh, yeah. John Shepard and all that. I wanted him to look, you know, like really like seriously badass and, and stuff. But I, the challenge with him was always, uh, he was always wearing a, a flak vest. So you couldn't put a lot of detail that wasn't going to be seen. You had to work with, you know, all the departments on that. And, uh, but of course, Taylor, you know, Rachel Aww. and all that. I mean, she was a queen and I just felt like this creative juice is welling up in me wanting to do, stuff for her and then of course so Ronan Dex and they were like well what would you do with him and I was like well you know he gathers things because he is a warrior and he's on the run and so we built this coat that we called the cow um because I've got <laughs> it, well for one it was so heavy it took it weighed about 25 pounds but he just would throw it on and walk around in it all day but um, we built it with like findings like pieces of metal and and pelts and and you know different leathers and but i tell you it was about six feet long that coat you know it was a labor of love for sure labor of love with our with our team constructing it and then he would come in and try it on because he was getting so excited <laughs> do is it a part of their their contracts that they be made available the actors be made available to you to x y or z extent in order to get the feel of it uh, and the the look of it right and to get them in because obviously they have to wear the wardrobe before they you know in pre-production before they go on um yeah. but uh where where is is the line there because it sounds like jason was one of the ones who were more like gung-ho about it and so i guess not all the actors are it's like all right let's let's try it okay it fits i'm good yeah <laughs> there was a few of those and that you're just trying to get them in so they don't put it on later and go oh it doesn't fit yeah shouldn't have had that, that burrito yeah. last night val let me tell you <laughs> And then they also, you've just made six of them, right? Because everything true. had to be multiples because they were stunted and they were, you know, wearing them all the time. And, you know, that was always on those shows. You have to prepare for all that. And so we did have a couple of people that were less than, um, 
enthusiastic about costume fittings, but I would, I would always read like the call sheet and that and like, oh, they have this scene off, you know, and I would go and warn them, like come in then and we would be ready for them. So it was about accommodating their schedule to a certain degree and them accommodating ours. For, I'm pretty bossy. Yeah. <laughs> for Atlantis, you went in a different direction. You, 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 got, you lost the triangles and you went with stripes and room in the back. It, that actually made line a line of dialogue in season four because they could now do this. <laughs> well, that was one of my one of my pitches. That was the second pitch that I had was, you know, I think that we can just make the uniforms a little sexier, right? That was that's kind of I would say that's a bit of my reputation. I I hope is that things you know look sexy and um, you know textural. Uh, so I, that was my second pitch to our to our creators and showrunners was that I thought that we could we could make those work a little bit a little more subtle on the color coding and things. So we did redesign for the lead cast our our um, uniforms and you know make the pants fit the girls really well and mm -hmm. there's little secrets you know and stuff like that. So I thought that was great. I thought they turned out really well. And then we still had the other uniforms represented. It was it was a nice blend transition. One of my favorite costumes that you did was, and we see it for one scene and she's sitting, is Be All My Sins Remembered. The, the surprise ending where Tori Higginson appears and you gave her this, so it's, it's her, but it's not her. You gave her this kind of like really, really burnt orange, like a oh. dark orange leather jacket. Yeah. And yeah. it was like if 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 a copy of Weir had been able to create like her own thing, it was like a skew from Atlantis. It was one of the coolest outfits for Aww. maybe the single the single coolest surprise reveal that Atlantis gave us. The coolest. And, that, and it and just on camera that long, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when doing something cuz I mean I didn't work with Tori. She was she had gone from the mm -hmm. show when I arrived, but to have this sort of, you know, she was iconic at the start of Atlanta, so I wanted to do her, you know, proud. And to just take some of that um, character that she represented and then make it more, you know, civilian modern yeah, kind of thing. So she's still tough. She was, just, you know, a power. Absolutely. Hedge sure. leather, you know, tough. <laughs> and, and stuff. So I'm a big fan of leather. It tells a lot of stories. I was about to ask your favorite material. So leather's at the top. I would say so because it it's malleable. It fits you, and yet it it fits to you. It also can be painted. It can be sanded, and all those things that we did to our costumes. Nothing ever came off the assembly line and went on camera. It had to go through all of these different levels of, of processing for it to look real. You know, so so everything we touched with with a little bit of painters or, or sanding or something. Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.